Hi, my name is Roland Smith. I work for the Trinity Access Programme and I'm here to talk to you today about the Higher Education Access Route or HERE Scheme. So the HERE Scheme um, was set up to try and help students from backgrounds who are underrepresented as third level access higher education. Um, so really it's there to kind of make the process by which you go from uh, secondary school to college through the CAO um, more fair um, in particular for students from different socioeconomic backgrounds. Uh, the HERE scheme is also very similar to the DARE scheme, which you may have also heard about, uh, which deals with students uh, with disabilities. So how does it work? Well, the first thing it does is it helps students at the point of entry. So the leaving cert can often be boiled down to a points race. Um, to give you an example, um, in Trinity here we have English studies, we have about 40 places. And how we would assign those usually is we would take the 40 highest scoring students who would apply and that is how we would get the points. So essentially you're in a competition with all the other uh, students who are doing the Leaving Cert and want to do English. The HERE scheme um, takes some of those places and ring fences them for students from certain socioeconomic backgrounds. So for example, three of those 40 places uh, were reserved for HERE this year. And because you're only competing with the other HERE students, uh, the number of points that you need is usually significantly lower than if going, going through the CAO um, ordinarily. So for example, for English, you'll see it was 487 points were the minimum points for 2020. Um, for HERE, the minimum points were 389. Um, and you can see another couple of examples here, law, general nursing, engineering, biological and biomedical science. Um, these are just five examples. It's really important to note that um, every single course that we have here in Trinity will have here places reserved and will have some kind of points reduction associated with them. So it can make getting into college uh, a lot less stressful and a, and a lot easier um, for some students from different backgrounds. But it's not just all about the point of entry. So also when you get here, um, there are additional supports. Now there's lots of wonderful supports for students in Trinity. Um, there's, there's an orientation program for all students. There's uh, academic and financial supports, but there are dedicated special supports for, for here students. So these are in addition to all the supports that you would get from college anyway. So we'll have our own pre-university orientation. So that will happen a week before the rest of the college have their orientation. We'll get a chance to meet all the other here students in Trinity. You'll get to meet some students who are a few years ahead of you as well, and um, who can tell you about their own experiences and how they've adapted um, to, to life here in Trinity. Um, we also have a dedicated advisory service. So each of you will have a Trinity Access staff member who's there as your advisor, someone for you to contact throughout your time here in college, who can direct you to different services and give you advice um, and, and help you kind of navigate the, the systems here in Trinity. Um, we have financial support, so we aren't, it's not the same as the SUSE grant. I encourage you guys, anyone thinking about doing the HERE scheme should go and have a look at the SUSE grant. Um, that's in addition to the HERE scheme. But um, we also have some financial support. So that means that uh, each student will, will receive small, a small payment during the year to help with kind of books and travel and things like that. But there are also a number of scholarships that you can apply for um, because of your status as a year student. Um, we have laptop loans, which have massively increased this year. So we're, we're giving out hundreds of laptops this year to our students for anyone who doesn't have a device to engage in, in online learning. Um, and then we also have academic support. So these are for students who might be struggling um, with essay writing or, you know, who might be struggling with one particular topic in, in their degree. And we would arrange kind of extra tuition or um, or one to one tuition. Even. So there's tons and tons of supports after the points reduction. Uh, so I, I don't think of it as just a points points reduction and equally. Many here students every year do not require the points reduction, so they come in on full points, but they're still eligible for all these post-entry supports. So um, how would, would you qualify for here? Um, well, the first thing is there's a number of indicators that you have to meet um, in order to be eligible for the here scheme. Um, you have to be eligible for the financial indicator and then two other indicators in the right combination. So the financial indicator is based on your family income for 2019. So not 2020, 2019. So your family income must fall on or below the here income limit and that will change depending on 
uh, you know, the number of dependent children in your family. So for fewer than four children, uh, it's 45,790 euro. Um, for four to seven children, it's 50,325 euro. And for eight or more children, it's 54,630 euro. So many people uh, often don't know what their family income uh, or their household income is, and sometimes it can change from year to year. So my advice would be to go home, um, or you're, you're probably at home listening to this actually, so uh, go have a chat with your parents, or you may be a guardian or a parent yourself watching this, and have a chat with your partner, um, and see w what category you would fit into, and if you would meet this limit. Uh, if you're above this limit, it doesn't matter if you meet any of the other indicators, you wouldn't qualify for the year scheme. You have to meet this limit. If you do, then you need to meet two of the next indicators I'll talk about in the right combination. So the next indicator is a family or GP, uh, medical card or GP visit card. So if you have one of these that's in date uh, for December 2020, and then you would meet this indicator and that would help you become eligible for the HEAR scheme. Um, did your parents or guardians receive a means-tested social welfare payment for at least 26 weeks in 2019? Not 2020, but 2019. So, you know, for six months or more, uh, was, some, was a parent or guardian in your household on means-tested social welfare payment? Is your parents or guardians employment status underrepresented in higher education? So what, what does that mean? Well, and what, why is that an indicator? Well, so if you look at something called socioeconomic group, which is based on uh, people's jobs, uh, and you look at the children of people in different job categories, so for example, higher professionals. Um, so in a typical leave and cert class, uh, the children of higher professionals, so like doctors, barristers, pharmacists, etc., like they're significantly more likely to go to college than other socioeconomic groups, for example, non-manual workers. So there's a big difference here. So the scheme tries to um, tries to uh, you know make access easier for people who are not in this higher professional group. So an example uh, would be a care assistant, cleaner, or indeed like if if your parents were unemployed. So um, you might qualify under this uh, indicator. Next is, have you attended a DESH secondary school for five years? So um, that's five of the last uh, six years of your second level education would have to be in a DESH uh, school um, for this indicator. If you're not sure if your school is a DESH school, I would say go and have a chat with your teachers and they'll be able to let you know. Or you can look it up, if you look up your school on education.ie, uh, there's a little um, DESH indicator that will tell you if it's DESH. And then finally, the last indicator is, do you live in an area of concentrated disadvantage? So uh, what's that mean? So if we look at um, where people live, you're also more likely to go to college based on where you live. So in Dublin 6 in 2014, for example, 99% of students went to college, whereas in 2014 in Dublin 17, only 15% went to college. So again, the scheme is trying to help uh, improve access for students from areas that are underrepresented. So these are geographical areas. So that, that's, an, that's another indicator. But how would you go about finding that out? Well, there's a website that you can go to called um, Pubham. And if you go to their maps, uh, particularly their deprivation index map here, and uh, click on that, enter in your address in the top right hand side here, or top left hand corner, and um, you should pull up your address on a map here. If you go to uh, deprivation here on the side, uh, 2016 by small area, you'll get up a kind of color coded map of the area. And you'll be able to see from the legend over here on the right hand side, if your area is designated as disadvantaged, very disadvantaged or extremely disadvantaged. And if it was one of these, you would qualify, uh, you would meet that indicator, which would help you become eligible for the scheme. So, as I said, you don't have to meet all of these. So you have to meet the income, but then you have to meet two more of these put in the right combination. So these are the combinations that are allowed. Um, you can meet indicators one, uh, so the income, two, and any of the last three. You can meet the income indicator three and any of the last three, uh, the income uh, and indicator four and any of five and six, 
or the income and five and six. So these are the different combinations that are allowed. So let's say you think you might qualify, uh, what to do next? So the first thing is from November, um, you should start reviewing here and there um, at home. Uh, you know, look at the website, I'll leave you some links at the end of this talk. Start getting together your um, documentation and uh, familiarize yourself with the, um, the application online and um, ask, ask questions, have, have things ready to ask your teachers if you're unsure, to ask your parents or guardians um, or to even ask us in the access program. Then um, by the 1st of February, you have to tick the box in your CAO application. So you'll have to have made your CAO application by the 1st of February, but you have to have ticked the here or there box. So the important thing here is that here and there um, all have the same kind of uh, the same timelines. And if you're applying for here, but you also think you might qualify for the dare scheme, you can apply for both. And it is advantageous to apply for both um, because you'll get extra supports uh, once you're here in college. So by quarter past five on the 1st of February, you've got to tick that box to let everyone know that in the CAO and in the access programs that you're, you're, in, you're going to uh, apply for here or there or both. Then by the 1st of March, so a month later, um, again at quarter past five, you have to have completed all elements of the online form. Okay? And then finally, uh, two weeks after that, so on the 15th of March, again at a quarter past five, you have to have submitted all your supporting documents. So for all those indicators that we talked about, some of them require supporting documents. Um, and those need to be submitted to CAO in Galway. And usually, if people are posting documents, we really recommend to go with registered posts so that you have proof that you've sent it and you can track it. Because if anything goes wrong in the process, they won't accept late documents unless there's proof that there's been some kind of error by a third party, you know, the post office or the courier or something like that. So it's really good to have a record of, of, the, of, the, of the documents that you've posted. So what kind of documents would you usually really need though? So these are the two most common ones. So you need, everyone will need to have some kind of proof of household income. So for that, you need a statement of liability um, if you're in employment or self-assessment if you're self-employed. For 2019, again, um, not for 2020. So it's really, really important that you get this for 2019. So it's always the year um, before the year of application. And then if you were looking for, if you were, to, if you were trying to apply under indicator three, um, you would need uh, to fill out the Department of Employment Affairs and Social Protection form. Uh, and you'll find that in the here booklet and you'll be able to get the here booklet at, at a link that I'll give you at the end of this talk. So these are the two most important documents. Now it's also really important for me to state that if you're someone who's in the care of the state of Tusla, um, you don't need to provide these documents. Um, all you need to do is provide a, a letter from Tusla um, indicating that you're in care of the state and you won't have to, you won't have to provide any of this information as a result. So this is the timeline, it's really important. I should stress that these dates are the, you know, these are the deadlines, but it's, it's always a good idea to try and do these things before the deadlines. Uh, you don't know if you're gonna have any technical issues, if the post is gonna be delayed, especially there's usually uh, delays getting forms stamped by the Department of Social Protection or in getting um, statements of liability from revenue. So I really advise doing all that stuff as early as you can to avoid kind of um, missing any of the deadlines or you know, unnecessary stress leading up to them. Um, there's no reason why you couldn't really start getting all this stuff together um, right away. So if you're looking for more information, um, you should visit accesscollege.ie. That's got information on the HERE scheme and the DARE scheme. It's got copies of all the booklets that I referenced, um, information about all the indicators and contact information for all the different colleges. And if you want to contact me directly to ask me any questions, I'm very happy to, um, to, to chat to you. Um, just get in touch with me at here at tcd.ie. So um, I hope that was uh, informative for you guys and um, best of luck this year in your studies, in your leaving search. And I hope to see some of you in Trinity next year. Bye.